experience a watch along unlike any other. You are about to relive one of the most infamous matches ever with and through the eyes and ear of one of the all time greats in professional wrestling. You are watching the premiere, unpremiere of IREF B. Hi, everyone. I'm Efren. And before we go any further, let's introduce the only person who could premiere this show with me. He is the longest tenured referee in WWE history, having been with the company for over 35 years. He was the third man in the ring for such matches as Razor Ramon versus the one, two, three kid. Brock Lesnar versus The Big Show when the ring exploded for the first time ever. WrestleMania events include Steve Austin versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 14, Austin versus Rock at 15, Rock versus Hogan at 18, Michaels versus Cena at 23, and Cena versus Rock at 28. You also saw him in the main event of Ric Flair's last match, as well as an All Elite Wrestling officiating the finals of the inaugural Owen Hart Foundation Tournament. Without question, he is a first ballot Hall of Famer, and rumor has it he has the best opening theme in wrestling podcast history. From that free show's Monday mailbag, please welcome to the premiere of IRFB on Premier Streaming Network, Mike Kyoto. Oh, Mike! Man. What, what what an introductory <laughs> thank you ever thank you for having me on the show brother <laughs> thank keep going, you keep going because every time i walk out this fucking door boy i don't get put over at all <laughs> welcome <laughs> to irfb mike thank you for joining us yeah thanks for having me Ref, uh Efren, man i i irfb i'm you know i'm glad to start this show off and let's rock and roll man i want to hit this show off great you know that's for mike sure. mike this whole show is two years in the making and was designed around you. And the match we are about to watch right. is the street fight between Kurt Angle and Shane McMahon at King of the Ring 2001. Yeah, what a match that was, man. I <sighs> was in like my hometown, New Jersey. So uh, yeah, that was one hell of a night. It's, it's going to be a lot to talk about on this match. Cannot wait, buddy. If you please, please go to your peacock or WWE app, hello overseas viewers, we love you, and type in King of the Ring. You have to type the whole thing out on Peacock because Kate OTR doesn't bring it up. King of the Ring, season nine, time code one hour, 39 minutes, four seconds. Again, King of the Ring, one hour, 39 minutes, four seconds. Now, while they do that, Mike, let me explain to our Premier Plus members how we hope this will work. This is a semi-interactive show. Unlike other watch-alongs where you just hit play at the beginning and let the show run, we want you to have your remote nearby ready to start and stop the match. I will always give you a 20-second countdown prior to us pausing the match and a three-second countdown when I want you to resume it. During the pauses, I will be asking my questions in relation to what's frozen on your screen and what's being shouted into his ear. Aside from the big moments of the match, which of course we will freeze frame, there are a few other moments that I'm going to point out and ask Mike about. In total, there are 14 places we are going to freeze the show. Again, I will give you ample time to grab your remote to watch it. This watch along is not about the whole show. It's about the match through the eyes and ear of Mike Kyoto. We will be hearing from all sides tonight. Mike, Shane, Kurt, Vince, and yeah, even Linda. Mike, what do you think? Have you ever done a watch along like this? No, not really. I mean, I've done the uh, Rock and Hogan. I've, I have done a watch along with Rock right. and Hogan, though, but uh, definitely not on the uh, Kurt Angle and Shane McMahon match, King of the Ring. So this is going to be the first time. Well, ever. let's let's bring it up here. We have it on our stream. I'm going to go back to the beginning again. We are King of the Ring 2001. One hour, 39 minutes, four seconds. Mike, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it, Efren. Stand by. IRFB begins in five, four, three, two, one, play. (laughs) 
This takes place on June 24th from the Continental Airlines Arena, Mike. Your hometown? Hometown. I was born 10 minutes from there in Continental. I was born in Bayonne, New Jersey. So this and working with Shane McMahon, which always uh, he always appointed me and wanted me to rep his matches. And, you know, we go back from when he was doing ring crew with Tony Chimmel and I and spent a lot of time on the road learning the ring crew from the bottom, driving the trucks and learning everything from the bottom up. And, uh, and at this point in his career, in 2001, Shane's decided to become a wrestler, man, you know, a little bit before that. And, um, you know, and uh, he had a lot to prove, being a McMahon, and he could work in the ring, and he, he gave it all out tonight. We'll explain that and, and watch this as we go along. This is the 15th King of the Ring tournament in the history of WWE, with Kurt Angle winning last year's crown. And here he comes, buddy. This is yeah. Angle's third Ooh. match of the night. Yes, I mean... He- he defeated Christian in the second match uh, uh, in eight minutes, 51 seconds, and yep. lost the final to after Shane spears him with the referee down. Right. Now, as we go into this, Mike, do you have any nerves, fears from the family, uh, anything you, you're hearing well, prior to the match starting? I know the family's watching this, and they're watching closely, you know, and uh, this is a big match for Shane. I mean, you, if you can tell, look at the intensity right there in the beginning of Kurt Angle. He does. He did not let up. Uh, I mean, an ounce of energy, man. He just, he was just ripping through Shane. And 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 honestly, all this stuff, like you'll see in the beginning, where I remember, like Kurt took over mostly 90 percent of the match, and that is like it. That's you know, from now Shane just taking a beating for the first five to six, seven, eight minutes was just like, oh, I mean, uh. You know, all these bumps and all that, people think, oh, it's easy, it's easy. But, you know, Kurt was on fire, and he he had something to prove, too, as well, because, you know, he, he's at this point of his career, he was pretty pretty new in the business, you know, and he had a lot to prove. And here is Shane has a ton to prove. So um, we're going to see how physical this match gets because it gets physical. We have our first countdown, Mike. We are 17 seconds away from pausing. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look at this. He's just, he's on fire. He's all over Shane at this point, right here. We pause in five, four, three, two, one, freeze. This is the the shot that Angle takes and gets juiced. You're right. Yeah, you don't gets... see it yet, right? No, I don't see it until I'm I'm behind Kurt at that point. And Shane's throwing these quick jabs, quick jabs. And, you know, Shane is a hell of a boxer, and nobody knew that, you know. And he always could box. And uh, let me tell you, he, he gave Kurt a stiffy. And I tell you that, I think that brought more intensity to Kurt because he he got a little hotter. Um, and it was kind of weird because here here's uh, Kurt on the offensive, and he's on the attack mode, man. And he's just in his zone right now for the first six, seven, eight minutes. But he's juicing. He starts to juice the hard way. And he's looking more beat up, but he's on the offensive for for at least six, seven, eight minutes of the first first part of the match. Let's start up again. Stand by. Three, two, one, play. We're going to have a quick countdown again, again. Get ready to stop in three, two, one, freeze. You see it for the first time that he's been opened, Mike. Right. He's open there. And then, you know, at that point in, in time in 2001, we didn't we didn't wear gloves. We didn't have gloves. Um, we didn't stop matches at that time. Uh, we let things keep rolling, you know. And I mean, especially you know, if somebody got hit the hard way, juiced up the hard way, and uh, and bleeding all over the place. So we didn't stop matches back then, unless the talent couldn't continue. That's for sure. <laughs> we'll get to that in a couple right. of minutes. Right. Let's let's start up again in three. Two, one, play. Ross is going to cut, call the cut from a right, uh, uh, from a call the cut from a right hand. It was actually a left, Mike. So, yep, he, he caught it from a left. He caught it from a left uh, jab. I know that because that's all he was really throwing was his left jabs in that beginning. But uh, you know, you see Kurt right there, and boy, he just seems like his intensity was just building up stronger and stronger. I love that. I think Shane had to come out and take a little bit of a break, man. Right. So, I mean, he pulled the heel move right off the bat, you know, mm-hmm. dipping out of the ring and stuff and uh, just getting his breath back a little bit. Um, 
and you know Kurt can tell he's just he's fired up still. He's just fired. The guy can go so. I mean, Olympic gold medalist. Um, just in, he's incredible shape here. Kurt is. I believe Kurt's like in his uh, early 30s at this point. He is 32, I believe. Right. So. And let me, yeah, uh, Kurt is 32. Shane is 31. Right. Shane's last match was on April 29th, defeating Big Show at Last Man Standing at right. WWF Backlash. Now, before that, Shane beats Vince in a street fight at X7. Right. And I don't think Which, uh, Shane ever won a match after that. <laughs> <laughs> it was sad I had all his matches, but that was the only thing bad about it. And having his matches was the count, you know, I was counting his shoulders three times, you know, three all the time. So little trivia for you, Mike. How many right. street fights has Shane McMahon participated in? Well, I and who has so he fought crazy. the most in a street fight? Hmm, that's a good question. I want to say I knew he used to have some good matches with Test. And I used to do some of those matches with Test and everything, but um, can't really answer that. Street fight. Um, I would say Test. He's been in 17 street fights. 17? Mm-hmm. His last mm. street fight was the Greenwich Love Her or Leave Her match against Test at SummerSlam right. in 1999. That was the one where Ventura refereed the main event. Okay. Shane would face Kane in nine house shows in late 2003 okay talking live events too okay yeah uh, yeah right now you see the wwf logo here mike the company will get the f out on right. may 5th of next year losing its battle with the world wildlife fund That's trivia right. mike kyota what else happened on may 5th 2001 when wwf got the f out Oof, lost a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, but something lost. something pretty big happened that day too. As what we happened? count down again, the plane ride from hell also oh, happened that my day. God, that's the same year. That's right. We plane are 13 ride. seconds away from counting it from pausing again. <laughs> yeah. Get ready. Five, four, three, two, one, freeze. Mike, I love, I Man. love this moment, Mike. Yeah, this moment right here. We just, this, this is where Shane punts him right in, the, right in the gut, man, right in the side there, in his ribs. And um, I'll tell you, man, that they were, they were not letting up on anything in this match as far as punches, potatoes. Uh, they, and they were just wait till the gimmicks get in here later on. But everything was nice and stiff and just snug in this match because it, it was a, it was a, it was a rough match, man. Definitely. You know, this is a vulnerable spot for Shane to capitalize on. All based on Kurt Angle and his Olympic gold medal right. just being in, being in the referee's position. It's it's such a great moment. Let's yeah. let's start up again. I'll count you down. Three, two, one, play. Yeah, just see this is where Shane's like, you know, jabbing, jabbing again. And he opens them up somewhere at some point. I remember he, he got opened up twice. But uh, then look at Shane's agility. I mean, he, he, look at him. He's just, he's he's got his win back. He's he's ready to go, man. He's fired up now. And then, uh, you know, Kurt takes back over right here. And he just, he just goes uh, collegiate on him, you know. And, uh, and I think he opened <laughs> him up right there with the elbow, too, I think, at some point. You know, could have been, I know one one was the punch. Earlier in the match, and you see how he's holding him? He's holding yeah. his head again. Yeah, I think he got caught up in the elbow too. I think Shane got him with the elbow. So, so this starts a three minute, 38 second segment outside the ring, Mike. Right. Question to you How would you say your job differentiates outside the ring versus inside, especially in a match like this? Well, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's still at the point with, with me being as, as close to Shane at that point and being, you know, friends with Shane and he's the owner working with him and for him and the company, I still got to call the match right down the middle and still, you know, proceed doing my job. What's the best. And you'll notice right here where I kind of distracted Kurt. So Shane could take back over at this point. So, Love it. So I had to be there for that spot right there. But, you know, it was an important spot, you know, make sure Kurt's not waiting too long sitting there at the table, you know, 
So I had to get right over there and get, you know, get his attention. So Shane cut him off with a clothesline off there. As we see him jump, <laughs> jump yep. over Heyman and, yeah. and Ross. Yeah. Now remember, Angle's already, already wrestled in two different matches prior to this point. Two matches. Total, two matches totaling 19 minutes. Right. Mike, who, are you, who would you say were the best conditioned wrestlers that you have seen in your career? Oh, man, I'm, you're going to have to go with, uh, you know, Bret Hart. I would say definitely Bret Hart, Chris Benoit, uh, Kurt Angle. Um, I'd say Eddie Guerrero. He was always well conditioned, man. And, uh, you know, there's there's a ton more, but I, I would say at least, uh, you know, those guys right there was, you know, definitely Chris Benoit, Kurt Angle, Bret Hart, um, Shawn Michaels in his prime. He was conditioned very well. I mean, these guys, they, they used to do hour marathon matches. Unbelievable. Does anyone impress you now, Mike? In I mean, you know, Austin Theory, Roman Reigns, of course. Um, Austin Theory, and there's, there's quite a few talent that do impress me. Yeah, that's for sure. IRFB, Mike, anything happening in your earpiece right now? Uh, it's going to be, you know, at this point in time, it's going to be a bunch of cues and cues for, you know, when to go home. I believe we had about 35, 40 minutes for total for the match, including entrances, um, which entrance, uh, they didn't really take too long on the entrances. They got right. The <laughs> right. So, um, you know, roughly about 35. And at this point right now, I'm just getting a bunch of cues. And, um, you know, there was really nothing at this point to really check on Shane. And Kurt, you know, his his gas wasn't too, you know, too big. Uh, you could see the bleeding stopped there after a little while. So, I mean, the, the gash wasn't huge, that's for sure. Do you remember when you started using gloves or were required to carry them? Yeah, that was probably about 10 years after this, maybe 10 wow. years or more. Yeah, at least. Yep. Yeah, see, the, the, the Shane's right into the stairs there. Game and Iggy, we're talking <laughs> a little bit there. <laughs> um, now Shane, I, I I believe I I went up to the yeah. See how I yeah I remember Shane called me back for something. So because I was gonna go back in the ring and then Shane called me up back for a spot or something, and then uh, we were just communicating there for a second, and then I'll go back in the ring. You know, he'll throw him back in. And, you know, with this match here, there's going to be a few things. The, the only thing I didn't like was Shane didn't hook the legs a lot. Okay. So, um, to me, it's like, uh, you know, see how he's like, you know, he's trying to win a big match and he never hooked the leg, you know, and you're, 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 you're in a, you're comp competing with an Olympic gold medalist. You better hook a leg when you're covering him. You know, it's, so that's the only thing I think that kind of hurt Shane in that match where he should have hooked the leg or he might've got the win. <laughs> at some point later on if it wasn't for that yeah, if it wasn't for that <laughs> <laughs> so here come the trash cans mike that are being yeah, thrown that into one, the yeah. ring they're that quite in they're, favor. they're quite shiny and and television ready mike yes did you guys prep the trash cans for uh, tv you, at this point with the shine or something you get them brand new so i mean you get them brand new and that's it and that's how they come brand new but there's a way that there's going to be two seams on those trash cans that come down on each side. And you definitely don't want to hit somebody with the seams because those were the, the most hardest parts of the aluminum, the reinforced seams. So you you definitely want to definitely, when you hit somebody with that trash can, you want to hold the can with the two seams on each side. So you, you can make it like crash, right? You know, bend nice and neat. See, he doesn't hook the leg here again. <laughs> oh. So... Yeah, so I mean, when you're you got somebody like Kurt Angle and you're trying to win a match, you got to hook the leg. He's yeah. also using a handicap placard sign, Mike. Yeah, misuse oh. of a handicap placard. Currently, eleven hundred dollar fine in California. <laughs> random, random. <laughs> oh, we were in New Jersey at that time. I don't think there was a fine for that. So. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, and here comes the, you know, the gimmicks are starting to pour here, in. Here, absolutely right. And uh, these guys are going hard all the way, man. All the way. Yeah. Were you Look a fan DDT. of... DDT. That was a right? nice transition there into the DDT. That was a good spot. I was at X7, uh, row five. 
I was an instant Shane fan that night after, against Vince. That, right. that Linda stand, one of the biggest pops ever. Right, right. Ever. Now, here's a moment here, Mike. Yeah. You tried if to you're, a sharpshooter. If your name isn't Brett or Sting, right. this move does not seem to be the easiest to execute when it comes no. to the turn. We yeah, are Shane, 18, yeah. 18 seconds away from our next pause. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I mean, you could tell how, you know, the transition of him getting into was a little awkward. So, I mean, you know, it didn't seem like he applied that move too many times. But um, five, four, you know, three, two, one, freeze. Mike Kyoto, referee Mike Kyoto, you call for the break here, but then allow it to continue. Should a break happen when they grab the ropes in a street fight? No, it should not. You know, and that's the things that that are um, it's created. It, you know, just being creative liberty and and just kind of bending the rules a little bit here. You know, and uh, you know, and there there's a point in time where I'm I'm counting them too. So I mean, it was a, they wanted a double count. You know, and I just didn't know why I was counting because you know it was a street fight. So um, it was only really pinfall, pinfall or submission. What's the, to win the match? What's the dumbest rule you think? is in pro wrestling today that needs to be changed? Mm, I would, you know, I don't know if it's, it could be the dumbest, but I mean, you know, when there's no rules in a match, yeah, definitely when somebody gets to the ropes, you shouldn't be able to break it when it's a no disqualification match or so forth. Um, and, you know, I just think kind of, kind of when it's no DQ, you just don't want to have like, you know, other like you shouldn't be counting uh, a 10 count or, you know, a, a count out or anything like that. Um, they'll even reiterate, you know, on the announcers on this match, I think you know, when I watched it, uh, you know, some time long ago, um, when I watched this match, it's, you know, they were saying, oh, well, there's no rules. There's no you can only win by pinfall or submission. And here I am counting in the ring. You know, so I mean. <laughs> And that's and that's what they wanted, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what they wanted. And then these days, you know, when you, there's there's a difference between an active double down and a double down. When somebody's just double down and are out like a light, yeah, you should give a good ten count. But these days, when they go into a double down, the crowd starts to to, to rattle, rumble, and they start rumbling, 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 and they get louder. And, you know, I, I like it better when the crowd takes over when they they double down like that instead of giving because I've never seen anybody really lose on a count out on you know in a ten count. Ever counted someone out in, at, on a ten count and uh, outside count the out? ring? On a, on, no, no, know, no, no. On a double count out, I may have done that once in my whole career. Ever disqualified? Have... Ever disqualified someone for being on the ropes, af, uh, top rope after a count of five? No, not on the top rope. No, that'd be, I, <laughs> no. That'd be a great disqualification. I think. I mean, a disqualification, you know, for not breaking it, you know, in the ropes or anything. I guess right. I have counted out somebody. Counted out. Um, Let Let's start this up again. Time code is one hour, 52 minutes, 19 seconds. We start again in three, two, one, go. Yep, and there, and there is, he's breaking it right here. And then to me, he was so close to the ropes, he could have grabbed him again, you know, but he got the stick. The stick was more, you know, kendo stick was more uh, more important on a kendo stick there. But you know, that makes a nice wrestling sound when you're hit with a kendo stick, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> it really does. Yeah. I mean, you know, to me, what you know, what I think with um, you know, Shane putting that on him, the figure four, I think he just could have, uh, or not really the figure four, he put the uh, what do you put on him? Shit, let's uh, uh, ankle lock sharpshooter. What no, yeah, put oh. the sharpshooter on. I mean, all right, so. When he put the sharpshooter on him, I really didn't think he need, needed to get to the rope because, you know, of course, there's no rules, really, in a street fight. So, um, you know, we, we I guess they just used that to break it, you know, at some point. But to me, you know, Kirk could have made a transition into something else on that spot. Look, look how agile he is here. Yeah, did, did, I mean. Did you call I mean, or text him after his mania injury this uh, year? What's that? Yeah, I mean, I texted yeah. him and stuff to see how he's doing, you know. Um you know, it's it's just I, I felt bad, you know, when he yeah. came back to Mania and I, I popped huge, man. I popped huge. Now look at this. You hurt your knee here. Yeah, I I, I pulled something on my knee, man. Mm -hmm. so, you know, and uh, just for a second, because you know, when sometimes when you go down a count, you just twist a little awkward. How you know, common was that for you to to 
like Al Maini. Oh man, uh, you know, and that was the left. So I'm mean, fifteen my, my, seconds away. My right knee was the bad knee, so <laughs> I got tweaked the left knee that night. But uh, you know, hey, I didn't, you know, with all these with these we guys. We pause in five, four, three, two, one, freeze. Ooh, man, that's a shot. My yeah. Kyoto. He just brings it. I mean, Shane brings the, the trash can, man, at that spot. Definitely, that's for sure. He brought that trash can. Do all unprotected headshots need to be banned in professional wrestling today? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. Yeah, I mean, I really think they should because, of, and you know, you, if you continue to do as much as the headshots that they used to do in the years, I mean, oof. I mean, I've seen some chair shots over the years, so many chair shots and trash can shots and – What's the worst one you've ever seen in the ring? Man, I'd probably have to say Rock hitting Mick Foley like 11 or 12 times or That's something. That's right. Ring. And he just ran. He brought every chair shot. That was, that was fucking amazing. It was just, uh, it was unbelievable. You know, so I showed, that's, that's I showed my really father, nice. I showed my father that, uh, that section explaining, do you know, after the, th he doesn't watch wrestling after the third one, he said, turn it off. F. Can't oh. Watch it. Yeah, I, let me tell you, I took one chair shot, Stone Cold The Rock in that WrestleMania right. the match. My fucking ears rang for three days and my neck was stiff for a week. I can only imagine 11 to 12 chair shots in a row. Did you like still that. work? Uh, yeah, I still work, but I was hurting, man, for a little while. I was definitely hurting for a little while. <laughs> Let's sure start was. it up again. Stand by. Three, two, one, play. Now, Mike, at this point, sure, uh, trash can shot, you're just putting your hands up in disgust. Uh, not, I don't know if not so much this right here. Uh, I mean, there. just, yeah, just kind of like, come on, like, you know, yeah. I mean, it's going to keep using a trash can, but that's what you do in a street fight. You use all every, you know, every weapon or, and every opportunity to win the match. I mean, so. Had to check on Kurt there to make sure he's all right, you know. <laughs> is um, it hard for you to not enforce the rules in a match like this? Yeah, it is hard because you're so used to enforcing the rules, you know. So you're you're so used to enforcing the rules, and then you gotta, you know. There I am limping around again. You see me limping a little bit. Fifteen seconds. Yeah. Yeah. My knee, but you know, and this shooting star. Oh my lord, he missed that. Mm -hmm. You know, that was a good spot. Five, right? four, three, two. One freeze. What's he telling you, Mike? He wants to go home. <laughs> 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 no, nah, brother. He was, I mean, Shane impressed me in this match so much. And not only just me, he impressed the backstage. He impressed the boys, I'm sure. He impressed the fans. I mean, he, you know, he worked so hard in this match. And he's just selling there right there. He's selling. So he's not saying much, but he's just selling. And, you know, and of course, throughout the match, I'm giving him cues, checking on him and all that other stuff. But what's got any, anything being told to you right now? No, nah, it's just going to be a bunch of times. It's, mm -hmm. it's a bunch Still of times, times, you know, and it, they may say, hey, is, is, is Shane OK? You know, after that shooting star. But I, I mean, I those are spots I know he's all right on. Um, it, it gets worse at the end of this match. Right. You know, Time right. code, one hour, 55 sure. minutes, 12 seconds. Let's start it up again in Three, two, one, play. Yep. So I'm asking them right here if they want to count. So they wanted to get a breather in maybe. So I started counting. And, you know, and all, you know, there is no count outs. It was just, just creative liberty to add to it. And I'm glad Kurt covered him here because he right. broke the count. Good right false false three yeah. there, Mike. Yeah, that was Very. A, that was a yeah, that was a good false finish there. How how long did it take you to perfect your three, your false three? Oh man, it took me quite a few years to get that, you know, real close like that and make it inconspicuous on whether you hit three or not. It's just um it's almost like an art for a referee. It's just one mm -hmm. of your arts that you really have to perfect in your false counts. And you want, you know, when you I mean, that was a delayed cover, so the false finish wasn't as good as any. If it would have been a quicker cover, it might have been a better false finish. But, I mean, when you when you give a fault, when you're a referee and you're you're counting false finishes near the end and 
I mean, if you get that crowd off their seats and they're standing up and the match is still continuing, that you know you're doing your job as a referee. Love it. There's Love nothing it. better than. Do you have a favorite two. false finish? False three? Oh, uh, not you as, or it, anyone. A, I mean, there's just a lot of them. I mean, working with Shawn Michaels. I mean, of course, Shane Kurt, Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon back in the day. They used to love my false count. So we are um, 20 seconds away. So that, that was something I had to perfect and stuff like that. And, you know, and it's important if you could swipe that third count coming down underneath your and almost kind of swipe the mat, but don't hit the mat hard and get that crowd off. Five, your seats. four, three, two, one, freeze. Mike. Mike. So, yeah. So this, this is, I, this is a, this is a spot where I remember, I think Kurt gets hurt or Shane, Shane hurts his, you know, um, when he suplexed him on the, on the concrete, you know, Shane McMahon says on the Steve Austin show podcast, that angle calls a suplex, right? But Shane calls, calls it, it off, off. Right. Cause right. they're on the cement, right? Kurt <laughs> overrules him, uh, yeah. performs it. And then says, Oh my God. Right, right, because that's all concrete right there. That's just one little layer of rug. That's it. That's just a one thin piece of a rug for the run, you know, for the entrance way. That's it. IRF being Kyoto. Anything yet? <laughs> Nothing yet, man. It was just, you know, to me, it was like they, they weren't really concerned until maybe coming up here in a little bit. You know, we'll see here. We'll talk let's, about it. Let's start it up again. Stand by. Three, two, one, play. Shane also says the tailbone is the reason for the ukulele and the hat in the weeks after after this. Angle is in the ring 15 days later. Right, right. Average yeah. average recovery time for a broken tailbone, 8 to 12 weeks. Oof. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, but see that... You know, moving forward with Kurt and his career, working with him, with a, he was working with Brock Lesnar. I was working that match in WrestleMania in Seattle. He, you know, he came and banged up. I mean, he had a broken neck. Um, he had other issues going on with his body. And look, you know, he still continued to fight through that WrestleMania match. And then Brock Lesnar almost broke his neck. You know, that was unbelievable. That, that Getting to the show moments here, buddy. Kurt Angle, yeah. That's, yeah. But this just goes. Shane's no slouch either. No, (laughs) fuck no. Shane is no slouch, bro. I mean, Efren, he he just, he works his ass. He has a lot to prove here, man. And, you know, this got real scary coming up here. You know, it got real scary. You're going to see Shane probably inch. I remember he kind of inched. I checked on him there. He's doing okay. He's good to go. And he inches a little bit because he knows he has to get over to that first panel. So 20 seconds. And he's basically getting in position here. Kurt takes a spill here. He tripped. And then, um, you know, they just readjust, slowly sell up, you know, and get ready for this spot, man. And this is where it got scary. Five, four, three, two, one, freeze. Now, I'm going to replay this just to to back it up just a second so you can hear the thud. Look at that. I mean, shit. If That had to hurt more on the tailbone than that suplex on the concrete. I'll tell you that. But he was bent over halfway and just hits that hard concrete. And it was just, it was just concrete from there. Ooh. This is supposed to be sugar glass, and it yeah. ends up being safety glass or or windshield glass. Mike, Mike, what can you tell us about the person or people that installed this? No one knew, and did you did you immediately not know it's sugar glass? No, I mean, I didn't know. I knew it was some kind of breakaway glass. You know, I it was called something like a breakaway glass. And it's and it's not even supposed to cut you, you know, as far as what I'm, you know, what I was told. And what we used to do this, you know, with glass and certain stunts on other situations, other nights and, other, you know, other events. And um, I remember it was a guy named Mike. Uh, it wasn't Ellis at the time. He came later on in the years. Um, it was... I, it was a gentleman, his name was Mike, and he used to work for the magic position with Richie Posner. And, um, you know, so he used to take care of all the stunts. Not the Richie buried a lot of stunt. Yeah, and, just, there yeah. was a bunch of stunts that, you know, they were in charge of. And, you know, so, I mean, this glass was not breaking, man. It just, for some reason, it was supposed to be a breakaway. And something, I don't know, if I don't think it was 
made right or whatever. But uh, yeah, some was some was up with that. I couldn't believe it wasn't fucking breaking because I mean, Kurt threw him, and you know his his heavy part of the body, which is his you know back of his lower back and his and his ass and everything, was supposed to go into that glad that should have broke so easy, but it wasn't breaking for some reason. It just wasn't breaking. You screamed at right after this, or or after this this spot? No, yeah, after it was it was coming up after this because it was like you know. They didn't want him going back through the glass, and this is where Vince was starting to get hot behind Gorilla. He was starting to, he was starting to really lose it. Everybody Let's start was. it. Stand by. Three, two, one. So now, you see, I go over to Shane's hand. You see, my right hand went to his right hand. I kept checking him. He squeezed me. Gave twenty me seconds, okay, and he's good to go. So, right. So he's let me he's let me know he's he's okay. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. So then here's Kurt, and Kurt was not gonna give up. Five, four, so, three, two, one, freeze. Boom. You we have frozen it with you jumping up, Mike. Oh, just yeah, that was a that was just something that was just like holy shit, you know. Um <laughs> just couldn't believe it. i was like okay it broke thank god it broke because like I, I had a feeling that if it didn't break the second time he was going to try and put him through a third time so you know and then now i'm thinking okay now we got one more spot coming up you know and this hopefully one. You know, okay <laughs> well i mean one more piece of glass right. and hopefully it breaks easy so and it wasn't either let's start again so now they're screaming Three, at this point two one Play. IRFB, Mike, go. Yeah, they're they're screaming at this point, you know, make sure Shane's okay. I was like, what the fuck, Kurt? I was like, damn, because like they they didn't want it, they they just wanted to eliminate the glass spot after it didn't break the first time. So, and then here, you know, this stuff was supposed to be like a I remember this this kind of glass wasn't supposed to cut you, but it, you know, here's Kurt. All right, we have cuts up. on the shoulder, cuts on, on the, the temple, cuts yeah, cuts yeah. that shouldn't that you don't see in wrestling. Not with not with that other stuff that was supposed to be just like a plexiglass type breakaway right. glass. And so I mean, now at this point, they don't want him to do the spot, and I'm yelling. I'm in his right ear. I'm like, no, they don't want you to fucking twelve do seconds. It. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. Don't no. And I'm I mean, they're screaming at me. Five, four. Three, Look at that. two, one, freeze. I'm going to back it up, Mike, because you hear you you scream, damn it, don't, enough. Yeah, let's, right. let's show you. Yeah, see that? I ref B, Mike, go. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting screamed, and especially right after this, man. I mean, Vince was fucking unloaded back there, and I was like, oh, my God. How What's he saying? Do I stop this, yo. What's this he saying? Person. Don't here. fucking do it again. Don't fucking do it again. You tell him not to fucking do it again. And I mean, I mean, I hear his voice in the background and, you know, Briscoe and fuck everybody at Gorilla just screaming fucking God damn it. And I mean, you know where Gorilla is? Gorilla now is about maybe 15 to 20 feet to the left of this, you know. So Gorilla is right there. It's close. Not only can I hear them screaming on the IFB, of course, but I hear them. Even screaming with the crowd because now I'm I'm not we're not too far from Gorilla, and I even I hear them screaming backstage there and live in my IB and it's like chaos. And at this point right here, this is why I was saying, "Damn it, no, damn it!" Like I and I've never probably used those words before, you know, in any other match, but right here, like I'm thinking I'm going to lose my fucking job because I can't get Kurt to stop. I know Shane will do anything to make the match right and make it go through right. And Shane ain't going to, you know, he ain't going to puss out or do anything else, man. He's not going to back down from a, a spot, a big bump like he has in his whole career. He'll come off a, an 18 foot cage. He'll, you know, he'll do anything. He'll come off scaffolding. And at this point, Shane is not going to sit there and go, no, don't do it. You know, it's, don't stop this, you know, I, and I know it. So if Shane, I kept checking on Shane as far as he was okay. And he was good to go. I knew we were going to be all right. So if the signal check fails and they're not okay, what would you have done? 
if they're not okay, I would have to either give them time to be okay. And if one of them can't continue, I would have had to call it. But like I said, in those days, 20 years ago, 21, 22 years ago, we didn't call matches. If if somebody was still hurt or if Kurt was hurt physically, Shane was hurt physically, those two guys, they wouldn't give up. They would continue to match and finish it. I know that. And they wouldn't let me. And I wouldn't ring the bell. I mean, we would all talk to each other. You know, they would continue to match and we would finish it one way or the other and, and get it done. They using your name to emphasize you better F and stop this or. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're saying Kyoto at times, you know, Kyoto stop. Don't fucking let him do it again. Don't fucking let, I mean, they're screaming. And, you know, I was like, you know, you could tell how I was getting really, really fucking hot. And I was like, right. You, you'll, you'll tell where I was getting hot, you know? And I mean, cause he wasn't listening to me at all. Kurt was not listening whatsoever. So, I mean, you know, and I, and I understand, I mean, Hey, you know, Kurt was doing what he does best, and he was he was going through a war right there, boy. Him and Shane, they were battling. Your time code is one hour, 59 minutes, 58 seconds. We start again. Let me get the countdown ready. Stand by. Three, two, one, play. Now I'm checking Check. on them both. Yep. We're 20 seconds away from our next one. Mm-hmm. I'm telling Kurt, don't fucking do it again. Don't do it again. At this point, I swear, I almost, I didn't think he was going to do it because he didn't grab Five, he grabs him here. Four, Watch three, it. two, one. Boom. And I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. You got to be fucking kidding me. He is not listening. Now, now you remember like years later, like we had the IFB, which we didn't have in the 80s and early 90s and stuff like that. So now there are IFBs now that when and we're Mike that we could talk back to Gorilla. At this point, I can only hear what Gorilla is telling me. They can't. They couldn't hear me. There was no communication okay. for me for the referees. Okay, so on the IFBs, there was no communication. To talk back to Gorilla. So I that Gorilla can't get my fucking like. Just letting you'll see at one point where I raise my arm yep. just to let Shane. Let let the uh, gorilla position everybody know that he's okay. The X is when somebody's really hurt. When you give the arm up, the fist, that man he's okay. You know, so and you'll see that. But and then now at this point, after the second time he doesn't go through, I'm all over Kurt because Kurt is on the offensive where he's got to put Shane through the glass. And obviously, they didn't give a fuck. What and I'm thinking, are we at the wrong fucking panel? You know, should we be at that next oh, panel right. down there? Because this oh, that's a great up. point. No, it was it? I mean, there was it was a point where I'm going. Should we be at that fucking next panel down to the right? Because it was the panels with the King of the Ring, and I'm like, we might be at the wrong fucking panel, you know. And when he grabbed Shane this time, I didn't think he was going to do it because he didn't grab him to do kind of like the the side soup the suplex into the glass. But then he fucking turns around and throws him face first into it. <laughs> fucking, I thought I was gonna lose my job at some point. I'll tell you. Man. How's the what's the difference between them yelling you at you 20 seconds ago and right now? Oh, it's it's even worse because tell now me. I really at this point, I didn't think fucking Kurt was even gonna try that piece of you know, try that move again. So he just figured, okay, I'm not gonna try it this way. I'm just gonna grab him, throw him fucking face first through the glass. And Shane, if you see, he doesn't even get his fucking hands up to cover himself. Like usually when you're getting drop kicked off the top or a punch comes in, you put your hands up a little bit to protect your face a little bit from the drop kick or whatever, or a high maneuver or, or a chair shot. You'll put your hands up, trash can. Here, Shane just head first right through the glass. Let's start this again. Unbelievable. Three, two, one, play. I'm hot here. Yeah. I'm hot. I'm fucking like hot because I'm like, listen up, listen. 15 seconds. Listen to me. So now I thought he was going to take him back outside here. And I'm like, what? I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Five, (laughs) four, three, two, one, freeze. Let's back it up, Mike. And let's hear it. Man, they're screaming right now. And I'm checking on Shane right now. And brother's okay, man. I mean, but look at him. 
He's so cut up. Shane had so many pieces of glass. Shane tells Steve. Go ahead, Mike. I'm Ooh. sorry. Go ahead. No, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Shane tells Steve Austin on his podcast after mm. the third attempt in relation to Kurt, he tells Kurt, you Olympic wuss. I can't believe you can't even throw me through this. And Angle roars and sends Shane flying I know. through Shane's the windshield glass. And I know. And Shane and Shane's saying that shit. And I'm getting a fucking earful from Gorilla. I mean, Vince is fucking livid at this point, man. And, you know, you're, I can only imagine. Anything specific? It's one, two, what, three attempts? It, it is. Work? Right. Three attempts three that attempts. didn't work. Two so, on this one. Right, two on this one, right? So he actually, two attempts, three attempts, one attempt, it doesn't work. Second one, it goes through. Then twice, so he went through the glass twice, and it was three attempts that it didn't work. So at this point, Shane's taking a fucking beating. And these things, I mean, this fucking shit hurts when you're you're upside down, falling on your head, your neck, and, and you're on it's concrete. It's shield glass. It's, yeah, it, it's, it's, and it's unbelievable. It's, it's. Mm. I mean, it's it's something that fucking Shane. It was so tough here, man. And and to me, I, I gave him so much fucking credit. I mean, I always did anyway doing his matches. I loved how Shane worked, man. We, he, you know, he really takes pride in in working in that ring. So we've frozen on an overhead shot of a bloody Shane sprawled out right. as you tend to him, while right. in the background, Kurt's holding on to the set, catching his breath. Right. Shane continues on Steve Austin's podcast. I didn't know that Vince almost came out three times during that match. Yeah, that's what I heard too. He was going to call it off. Shane says about you, Kyoto was usually my ref because we go back in the day, back yep. to the ring crew. That's and true. it takes three, not two. It takes three. So yeah. in the IFB, I guess Vince is saying something. Kyoto's oh. talking to me, but he's saying gibberish because I got whacked in the head a couple of times. Right. Vince thinks I'm shooing him off and I'm disobeying an order. Yes. Gorilla was absolutely quiet. Vince was going ballistic, throwing stuff. Yes. IRFB, Kyoto, go. Man, I'm telling you, I'm just getting a shitload. From, I'm hearing from Vince and he's screaming on that fucking thing. And I hear he's going off like anything. Now, at that point, I didn't know he was going to actually walk, almost come out and walk out and stop this match. Um, I'm just thinking, man, I can't do this to Shane. You know, I, I can't do it. I couldn't do it to him. We didn't, we were programmed in the professional wrestling business for many years, man. Like, and just not to stop a match, even, you know, and, and you would ask the boys, like, he'd say, oh, my arm's broke or my arm's dislocated. And I'm like, all right, what do we, what do you want to do? All right, let's just finish it. Let's tell him to go home. We, I, we weren't programmed like that. And when I started, you know, in this business in 85, 86, and started refereeing my career in 87. Um, I mean, you just weren't, you weren't programmed like that, man. The boys, you know, when the boys told you if they couldn't continue or if they couldn't do this, then you stopped the match. But but they never did. <laughs> you were never programmed to stop a match, and I wouldn't do it. Imagine me doing this, and, I mean, Kurt's taking an ass whipping on him. Everything, I mean, he's putting an ass whipping on Shane right here, and... I just stopped the match. You know, it's just no way. I mean, I wanted Shane to go out and finish this match and finish it all the way to the T. And um, and I stuck there with him, man. And, uh, you know, I, I believe if something would have happened, if I would have got fired, I believe Shane would have stuck up for me with Vince, you know. And, and you know, Vince knew, knew where me and Shane go back, you know. And and I think Vince had enough credit credibility in me, um, I'm hoping, you know, in the match that if, if he wasn't all right, I would have done something. I would have done something different. That's for sure. Let's start it up again. Here we go. Three, two, one, play. <laughs> Hands over your head, Mike. I know. I'm fucking stressed because I hear Vince fucking going off. Mm -hmm. Anything yeah, I mean, specific you really remember? A lot of cussing, man. A lot of cussing, man. A lot of cussing. And, you know, and then, and I'm like, fuck. And then Kirk covers him. Right. I'm like, get him up in the ring. You know, he's like, help me. I'm like, I ain't helping you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> 
<laughs> it's like, and then I see all this glass in Shane's head and his face. And I'm like, you see, I, I, that's where I just checked on Shane again. Okay. You okay? Five, and four, three, two, one, there freeze. Again. Yes. Yep. You, uh, this is the second time you've checked on him in right. 10 seconds by grabbing right. his hand. Right. That's how, that's how it worked. Like, I think, you know, I wasn't as more worried for Shane being in there live, being a third man in the ring in that match. You know, I was just more worried that if I didn't keep checking on him like that, that they would think I wasn't checking on him enough, you know, Got because it. they're watching and they know the signals, they know this. So me to go back within that short a period of time, I'm getting fucking screamed at. So this way, I know they're watching, so I have to go back and check on them. <laughs> so once I do that, they know I checked on him and he's okay again. But I wouldn't have went back if I wasn't getting screamed at so much, you know, because I already checked on him like five seconds or so ago. And then, uh, you know, I just went back because I, I heard nothing but screaming in the background. I mean, Vince is going off. And then, you know, I hear, then I hear like, you know, the gorilla position and it was just chaos because the fucking mic was wide open back there. So how many, how many people you think are screaming at you at that point or screaming at that point? Oh, well, there's a few. I, I mean, it, wanted, it, wanted, it wanted to say like 10, but I wow. mean, it probably could have been like probably three or four people just going back and forth. The agents probably saying, no, man, this, this, and this one's going, no, 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 fuck, I'm fucking, you know, I'm just here in chaos back there and i'm like what the fuck i'm like let us finish this match but you i'm gonna know, start i'm gonna start it up again ross ross mentions you in a second okay stand by Love three that. two one play Any chance you're considering stopping the match, Mike? No, not at all. No, no, no consideration of stopping this match unless Shane gave me the Iggy. You know, if Shane or if Shane gave me the Iggy or he was unresponsive, I would stop. You know, definitely I would stop the match. But until I get, you know, when you're, in, it, it's hard to say. Being a referee, man, you're in there, and what these guys have gone through for the first thirty minutes. They got five more minutes to complete the finish. I couldn't stop a fucking match at this point in a career. Like, I mean, if and if I know they're okay, all right, they're beat up. Yeah, they're cut up. They're beat up. This is professional wrestling, you know. So I mean, you know, unless something tra you know, really, if he had a broken something or broken a bone or done something or something else, yeah, we may have never got to this last this spot. But um, as far as I know, if they're okay. We're going to continue, you know. How long do you think you were outside the ring for that whole thing, Mike? Um, see, this is where Kurt, he hooks the leg, you know. <laughs> right. See, now I think if Shane would have hooked the leg early in the match, we would we wouldn't even be this far in the match. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I mean, we got about, I mean, I know they, they wanted this match to go home. Uh, you know, you could tell when he got the case, I went over to um kurt i said get him on the case and let's go home you know look at the blood on the canvas mike yeah yeah you were outside the ring on for that segment for six minutes 51 seconds was it that long yeah huh? well, yeah it probably was seat. probably was we felt like 20 minutes right yeah it did it felt forever forever now watch this like nut shot here now here comes these this is where i'm like loving it shane comes right back you mm -hmm. know and he's whacking him i mean he's not you know he's hitting them hard with this lid trash can't let and he hits him good there you know angle slam boom this match lasts 25 minutes 58 seconds mike yeah i wish yeah. shane would have covered him a little bit a <laughs> little bit earlier on this okay a little bit earlier because it took away from the false finish a little bit but 
We didn't get, you know, we didn't get a real good false finish like we should have on that spot there. But look, That's, Shane's been through fucking war right yeah. now, man. He's been through war. So is Kurt. The triple th- threat match that follows this, Mike, Steve Austin, yep. Jericho, and Benoit. Yep. They don't change the canvas. Oh, they didn't, huh? No. Wow. Blood marks all over it. Yeah, we used to. Yeah. They mm-hmm. change canvases now, boy. You yeah. got about six canvases under that. And they sell them. That's, yeah, and they mm-hmm. sell them. Mm-hmm. They sure do. That was a nice bump into the corner. Now you're going to watch this. This is going to be an interesting spot coming up. And it will be our mm-hmm. final freeze frame of the show. And countdown will be coming up. Yeah, and then you know, Kirk gets over. I think he grabs that piece of wood, starts whacking Shane with it. And uh, this is an interesting spot. Yeah, As Kurt's he, going over right now. Right, grabbing the plywood. Gets that plywood. And then I was wondering, because like here's Shane in the corner, thinking, how's he going to get 17 him seconds on top of this board? And he's in the corner already, so he doesn't have it way on top of the turnbuckle. You know, so I push it up a little bit more there. I push Five, the board up. Four, and then, three, two, one, freeze. Yep, and if you could see that left piece, that wasn't even on top of the rope. That it's not. Thing. That's right. And brother, I mean, I just had to grab it and just and just I'm just holding it up as as much as I can without making it look, you know, obvious because you really don't want it to make it look obvious. You know, definitely just be discreet about it. And I'm holding it up as much as I can here, just enough to get this spot off. You know, and and because you know, Kurt's, I don't know, two fifty maybe. You know, Shane's a good two, two something, 225, 240, maybe. I mean, poof. I mean, there was a lot of weight on top of that plank, a little piece of wood there. Let's start it up again, and we'll play the audio for the end of the match. Stand by. Three, two, one, play. Tell Let's us see. your Linda story. Oh, yeah. And now when I walked back, I, you know, that was after all said and done, checked on Shane, checked on this. Linda comes right up to me and goes, Mike, what a great job. Fantastic job you did. And thank you very much for grabbing that piece of plywood, you know. And she's like, and I mean, she was, she noticed it. She noticed it right off the bat. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of people, and especially Linda came up to me and, and everything and said, you know, hey, great job. Way to, you know, get to that piece of wood before it tipped over. You know, and I was just like hoping they hurried up and got on that piece of wood because I didn't know how much longer I'd be able to hold that up. Man, what a match. What a match. Of course you're worried right. that plank's going to come off. Of course. Oof. Yeah. What a match, though, man. Let me tell you what Shane says. Kurt, on the Steve Austin podcast, Kurt and I come back through, back through Gorilla. And it was one of the first ever standing ovations, ovations right. because they weren't given back then. Right. I'm not saying that to brag. I was just appreciative. No. My dad was nowhere to be seen. He right. was fuming. Yes. As we walk in the back, there's a whole line of guys. All the boys were applauding. Yes. When you pop the monitor like that and all the boys are giving you a standing O in the back, that is the ultimate high you can ever get, followed quickly by the ultimate low. I turn around the corner on my way to the trainer's room before we go to the hospital, and then here comes Marissa, eyes mm. bawling. Right. She has no idea because I didn't tell her anything. I right. said, look, this is going to be rough, and she had no idea it was going to be like that. She had no idea if I was okay, no insight to the business, no communication. So she just saw me gushing and everything. And I'm laughing and Kurt and I are high-fiving. Right. On Vince, he says he was so mad because he thought I disobeyed an order. Vince says to him, look, if I ever say something, and Shane says, I would never disrespect you that way. And if you said it, I would have stopped. But I never got the message. Well, Vince growls. And he said something very nice that he said would stay private and said, but don't you ever effing do that ever again. Yeah. Shane says he was so hot. We were supposed to ride back together and he didn't he ride didn't. with me. No, he, he got didn't. his own car. Austin's laughing the whole time. Right. As Shane's <laughs> telling this story. Yes. So, I can see Austin laughing. <laughs> so Mike, you go through the curtain and what happens? Tell me about everything you saw. No, in terms of Shane. 
the standing ovation. I mean, it was a standing ovation because I'm kind of like, if you see like Corderas has helped me carry Shane to the back and then Shane whispers in my ear, okay, let me go. Cause he didn't want to be carried all the way back to the back. You'll see it in a sec. I remember him right. buzzing me at, at some point and he says, he whispers there, right there. And then we let him go. And, but you know, he's selling, he's selling and he's just selling and, you know, we get back to the back, there's a standing ovation, but Vince wasn't there, you know. And then, do, you know, you know, do you notice that immediately? Um, yeah, I mean, the standing ovation, yeah, because they gave No, Vince, Vince not being there. Uh, no, I noticed that, like, maybe maybe a minute or two into it or a couple minutes. I'm like, oh, shit, where's Vince? You know, like, I'm thinking he was doing all the screaming in the fucking <laughs> IMB. I mean, he was fucking flipping out with, along with everybody else, because when Vince flips out, everybody else flips out. Briscoe applauding? Um, uh, I'm sure everybody was in there applauding. I can't exactly, you know, but I remember Briscoe and a bunch of people coming up to me like, hey, you know, Michael Hayes, what the fuck happened? You know, Pat Barrett. And, and I was like, look, I, I was telling Kurt, you know, I fucking told Kurt 10 times. I was getting fucking hot. I said, I couldn't fucking, you know, I couldn't stop him, you know? And um, so then you know, I went up to Kurt. I checked on Shane Hugged each other, man. Great match. Fucking awesome match, man. And the applause. I mean, you got to show the applause where Shane probably gets. He gets such a standing O from the crowd. It's, it was just, that was a total respect thing that he gets, you know, because this crowd was really coming live, man, at the end. They were really fucking, with all them spots right there, with the glass spots and the angle slam, man, they jumped up and they were fucking. Are you thanked? Are you chewed out? I'm thanked by um, who and I, shoot out by who I'm no, nah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't see Vince that night, you know, I didn't see Vince that night. So, I mean, and that was definitely a respectful applause. Right. You know, applaud. Oh, um, they love him. Yeah, man. I mean, that, that right there, that match, I really think put Shane over the top, you know, and just, you know, with his wrestling career and just being a, an owner plus what he's accomplished and, you know, in the ring, man, was just uh, impressive to me, you know. Um, you know, at that time, I'm probably about 34 years old. He's 31, Kurt's 32, well, you know. And, um, and you know, in this business, too, and with WWE, when it goes back to, like, Vince McMahon Sr., you know, they never wanted any of the McMahons to wrestle or be, in, you know, involved in the ring and stuff like that. Um, he always, that was like his rule of thumb. Like he never wanted anybody to be in the ring and his family wrestling, um, which, which you've seen it, you know, they've, they've done so much. Vince has done so much in the ring with talent. Um, and then, you know, here's Shane is wrestling Vince and, and now Shane, you know, this, I think this is the match that really put Shane over the top. It's part of the reason I bought a ticket, Shane was over with the crowd and, and to see them fight at X7. Oh my that, god! Yeah, that part of my money was because of that match. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. So I mean, you know, we, we go back, and it's very, it's it, it's an applause, but you could tell there was tension because okay, you know, to me it was like okay, he gave this big everybody, you know, was given a standing O and everything, but everybody knew fucking Vince was still hot, so they're not, you know, so. There was kind of tension and quietness after a while backstage. And I see Marissa and I said, you know, he's okay. He's okay. He's in there. Um, then I, you know, I spoke to Linda for a minute or two and we talked to some agents. Then I went and seen Kurt. And I said, Kurt, man, did you not fucking hear me, brother? I was like, Kurt, I was trying to tell you to stop, man. I was like, you know, they did not want you to put Come passionately or ang angrily? No, not angry. Not angry. Not, there was, you know, just, you know, just. I wanted to know if he heard me give him the cues and what, you know, because the cues are important on everything, time, whatever, you know, and talking to the boys and relaying stuff, especially when it's coming from Vince McMahon. So at this point, you know, Kurt said, oh, Mike, he was, he was, you know, I have trouble hearing out of this side of the year, my, this, this year on this side. I'm like, are you serious? You can't hear out of that side. It's like, not really, not too good. Oh my God. And I was like, well, how did the other year not? I wanted to say, how did the other year not hear me? Because I was screaming. Um, Did you ask Linda about Vince? No, not, not at all. That's not, okay. my, that's not my, you know, place to ask, you know, 
Like, is, um, is he mad or angry or? Oh, I knew he was hot. Okay. Fuck, I heard him on the FB for God knows how right. long. You know, I mean, totally for, I mean, it felt like a lifetime, but I, like you said, I was out there for six minutes plus. So for those four minutes, maybe those spots were happening or three or four minutes, those spots were happening. Man, it felt like a lifetime because Vince was so fucking hot. But I heard, and I heard, you know, Pat and there was a couple of guys. I think it was Michael Hayes or Pat Patterson was there, and he, and then that's when I got wind that Vince almost came out like two or three times to stop that fucking match. I said no. I'm like what? the only time I ever seen him stop a match was at like Long Island Nassau Coliseum when he went out with Rhino and somebody. Oh, that's right. Stop that fucking match right in the middle of it. Fuck! <laughs> I was like, holy shit. But what what did Pat say to you? What did what did Michael say to you? No, nah, they were just uh they they loved the match, but they were on eggshells because Vince was still fucking hot. I mean, you know, Vince, you know, like he like you said, you know, you disrespected my 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 fucking command, you know, like you know, Vince Vince was going nuts, and if Vince he usually has all control of his show or his company, which he does. I mean, so at that point, he just felt like he felt like Shane was disrespecting him at some point. But, you know, it, it's it's a little bit different. I'm sure when Vince is looking at talent that he's paying in there to do a professional job and get the business over. But when it was his son, it was it, it, that 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 was another place in his heart where he was worried, you know. So you've talked to Kurt. Right. When do you talk to Shane? Talk to Shane in, in the training room and everything, and they were cleaning the glass up, you know, out of him. And, Is Marissa uh, there? Uh, Marissa, yeah, she showed up. At, you know, when Marissa came in, I walked out. Like I, I talked to her in the hallway for a couple seconds and see he's okay, he's fine, hell of a match. She you balling know, still? I mean, or she was, uh, she was upset. upset? She mm -hmm. was upset, worried still, and everything. Because I mean. Shane, I, I don't think he told her anything. Right. You know, what might happen and all that stuff. So, um, see, and, and, you know, and talking about the IFB, I mean, that was, it could have been a lot better if I think it would have, Vince wouldn't have been so flipped out if I could talk back to Gorilla at that time. You know, what would you have said? I would have said, Shane's fine. Shane's fine. He's you think okay. They would have, you okay. think they would have believed you? Um, you know, I, I just, because you, I, yeah, I mean, you have a, they, you have a history of being trusted, of course, right? Being there, right, right. This is different, right? You think? Do you think different. they believe you? Um, or, I mean, or, or, or I'm or, sure or, when they seen the, the arm up, they were relieved because you've totally done it. You did it twice or three times, right? In the match, or especially on the outside, right? I think what freaked out Vince is probably when the first time it originally was supposed to go through. It didn't, and Shane like almost landed on his head and his neck, you know. So, I think Vince was worried about if this fucking glass don't break, you know, I don't want my son breaking his neck. That's the bottom line. It's nothing's worse than having Shane seriously get hurt, then you know, and then just make sure that spot. You know, I'm sure that if they would have done something else, it might have been a little less stressful for Vince, but you know, they just, they, they were determined to, to make that, that work. You know, they were determined to make that sure he was going through the glass several times. So, what do you and Shane talk about when you see him? Uh, we just, we just hug each other. Thank you for the match. We're fucking awesome. You know, and, uh, thanks for all the cues. Thanks for checking on me and all this. And I was like, no, thank you. He was like, you know, he was, my dad's pissed, man. He was like, you know, He's fucking hot. And I was like, I know, I heard, you know. So um, he's like, don't worry, I'll handle it, though. You know, and, you know. He, of course, Shane would take all the heat. That's for sure, you know. There was going to be heat put on me. I'm sure Shane would have backed me up. Do you talk to Ross or Heyman after the show about the match? No, not that night. Not that night, nope. I remember getting ready and have to go now tearing down the ring after I was checking on Shane, talk to Shane, talk to Kurt. And, um, you know, Kurt was very pleased with the match, pleased with everything else I did. Um, and he, he did apologize. He's like, sorry, Mike, I, I didn't hear you. I, I have trouble hearing out of this side of the year. And I went, holy shit. And I didn't know that, you know, and I've been working with Kurt 
with Kurt quite a while, so I didn't know that. But I, I mean, I you believe him? Here. Yeah, because I mean, his his ears are like cauliflowered up, you know, from all the years he's been, you know, wrestler, and um, and then in, into professional wrestling. But you know, um, yeah, I had no reason not to believe him because Kurt was a very stand up guy and honest dude. So I mean, yeah, there's no way I did not believe him. You believe Shane doesn't understand you? Uh, no, I mean Shane understands. My thing is like he, he says Kurt he gonna, says Kurt was gonna do Kurt was gonna do what he wanted to do anyway, I I believe. You know, I didn't I didn't believe that you know they were they were trying to make this the best match of the night. Kind of feel like they did make it the best nat- match of the night, even though it wasn't a title match, you know. So I don't know. I mean uh I, be, I believe Kurt was going to do what he wanted to do and just take the heat later or not, you know, but, you know, Kurt was top talent at that, that point. Last question. Mm-hmm. When do you see Vince and talk to him and how does it go? Uh, I think it was at uh Monday night raw. I at MSG was, the following night. Yeah. The following night. Mm-hmm. And Vince just looked at me. What time is this at? And uh, this was like sometime in the mid afternoon. Like okay, he showed up, and I, you know, does he does he come there. find you, or do you find him, or you just no, no, we were all? just we was crossing path. You know, okay, so and uh, and I and I and I told him, I said, you know, he said, Mike, he was like, thank you for last night, good job. I said, really, Sorry, I said, um, you know, there was some things I was telling him. He said he didn't hear me, and he was like, up, oh. you know, don't worry about it. He goes, let's move forward, and uh, you know, he's like, thank you very much. You know, and I said, no, thank you, Vince. You know, hell of a match last night. Hell of a show. And uh, so, I mean, I didn't get chewed out or nothing. I think Shane took all that from me. So, I mean, you know, I mean, I know Shane covered for me. That's for sure. Do you ever hear about any follow-up conversations from between him and between the two of them after the initial? No, I mean, I, I just remember Shane, Shane didn't go back with his father. That's, that's, right. that's all I remember. And I was like, oh shit. I was thinking, fuck. I was like, we got, we got heat. <laughs> we got heat. But, you know, um, you know, after I'm sure it was said and done, everything went smooth. Everything went great. I mean, I'm, I'm sure Vince was pleased. But he was, you know, it took him a while to cool down. You know, it took him a while to cool off. That's for sure. I mean, that is not the first time in their lifetime that Shane and Vince butt heads. <laughs> you know, and if, and if you realize in the last 20 years, they've been butt heads too. So they, they, they're both, uh, they're both uh, hard on each other. <laughs> that's for sure. And that's where we will leave it. The premiere of IRFP on Premier Streaming Network. We would love to hear your thoughts on this concept using the hashtag IRFB and at Watch on Premier. You can find me at Ephraim Blackjack and Mike at MJC Kyoto. If this worked, let us know. If we can improve it, tell us how. We have another semi-interactive event in the works. And of course, since it involves me, Mike, you know it'll be different. Mike okay. Kyoto. This concept was designed specifically with you in mind, specifically for this match. What did you think of IREF B? Love it. Love, love it. And let's do it again. There's many more matches in my career we can go and have a nice watch along with all you these were matches. absolutely magical tonight. Oh, absolutely magic. Just, just like I thought. For artist, executive producer, J.D. Hoop, all the great people here at Premier Streaming Network, I'm Efren at Efren Blackjack, reminding you to watch episodes of The Game Event, now streaming on demand. Thank you for joining us for the premiere of I Ref B on Premier Streaming Network. One left. One love. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.